there was just something missing. I just slowly started to sink lower and lower. And on the Air Force Academy, they have a stable. And so what I found myself doing was just going to the stable and kind of sitting on the fence post, watching people and their horses and really longing for that connection that I had when I was younger and I had horses. Long story short, I ended up adopting a baby wild Mustang. And for the first time in a while, I felt like I really had my purpose back. I left the military. I was medically retired after 31 years. I felt very lost. Um, I lost my purpose. Um, I left the sheriff's office as well. I took an early retirement out of the sheriff's office and really found myself um, without anything. Uh, I struggled with uh, self-medication with uh, alcohol. I struggled with suicidal thoughts a lot and suicidal ideation and I know that now I was just trying to escape the pain. You know, no one wants to feel pain and certainly nobody wants to be responsible for their own pain. He would not let me know he was that sad inside. He shared some, but he was going to fix it all on his own as the grown up that he was. And, uh, and I had no control. I had no influence over a grown man and his choices. And his choice was that he just couldn't take the heartache anymore and the losses. And I don't think he could see the way out of the darkness. There was limited daylight, sub-zero. He hadn't seen any of us. We couldn't go there. He invited hell into his life. And I believe that at the time he did this, um, it was his escape from all the pain. And I think he was helping us. I think he thought he was helping us to not burden us. But what's left is a pain. It's, it's a pain that um, it's my child. You don't love anything more than that. And the need for people to ask for help if I could say anything, is whatever that gut-wrenching feeling of loss, the one that you leave behind is gonna be far greater if there's anybody that you love in your life. The pain that you feel doesn't compare to the pain that's left because I can't quit. I'm not going to lay down and let life take over me. I'm gonna control it. I'm going to find ways to help people. Because now that's what he would want, to tell other people his story. I joined the Air Force right after high school in 1999 and did four years. And during that time, I served as a personnel specialist, but I was assigned to the 342nd Training Squadron for Combat Control, Pararescue, and EOD. Growing up, I always felt like kind of an outcast or that I really wasn't part of a group. So being in the Air Force for me really gave me that uh, sense of purpose greater than myself that connection with others, the confidence, the self-esteem that I feel like I didn't really have growing up. And so when I got out, it was really, really difficult for me to transition out of that. The reason I got out of the military is because my husband and I had two kids and at the time it just made more sense to stay home. 
but that was really tough for me because I really, really loved my career. Even though I love being a mother, I realized that being a stay-at-home mom wasn't my only purpose. I adopted Shelby in 2003, and really I didn't know what I was about to embark on, and it was actually pretty incredible and life-changing. So I was working with these trainers, and what they were telling me when it comes to gentling a wild Mustang is that they're extremely sensitive to our emotions and the way that we show up. Every afternoon I started going out to the stable to work with Shelby and the trainers would say, when you go into that arena, if you have any insecurity in you, the horse is gonna pick up on that. So what I had to do is put myself in a state of presence, confidence, certainty, and clarity every day when I would step in to the arena with Shelby. And what I now know after getting the education that I have is that I was actually creating new neural pathways in my brain to show up differently in life. After doing this for a while, I started to notice I was different in my life and in my relationships. And so when I would get into situations where I would normally respond or react or be stressed out, I was actually able to govern my mind and my body and be a little bit more in control of my emotions. I started to think about what a career would look like and I knew the healing that I had received from Shelby, and I really wanted to be able to give that back to other people who were struggling. In 2005, I ended up moving back to Ohio from Colorado, of course, bringing Shelby with me. And at the time, I was rebuilding my life. I didn't have any formal education, I had been waitressing and I decided that it was time to go to school. And I thought business was a good uh, start. I enrolled at Owens for business. And while I was in college, I wrote a business plan to own a horse farm. I got the paper back, shoved it away in a drawer, went on with my life. And my grandfather told me about a farm that was for sale in Grand Rapids, Ohio. And he told me I should go check it out. And at the time I thought, oh, well, that's funny. I'm a waitress, <laughs> I'm a single mom. Um, I don't know how I would ever afford a horse farm, but curiosity got the best of me. I went to the farm and when I drove through the gate, I just had this overwhelming sense of home. What I would do is I would sneak in there <laughs> and I would go into the arena and I would just pray like, okay, God, if you give me this farm, I promise I'll use it to help people and I got an idea that I could take my dad to lunch and with my little business plan and see if he wanted to partner and go into business with me. And surprisingly, he said, let's check it out. Let's look into it. We started the process and 30 days later, we were moving into the farm. That was really just the beginning of things. Got the farm and we started boarding and training and we blew up quickly. We had 40 horses within six months, which was a lot. <laughs> and uh, I found myself really focused on um, training and competing, and I got back into that world, and it just really wasn't filling my heart like I thought it would. I thought to myself, this isn't my purpose, and I shut everything down. I was soul searching. I knew I wanted to do something with horses and I also knew I wanted to help people. And that's what I met a guy named Rob and he told me about a program called EGALA, which is the Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association and how they have horses on the ground that help people emotionally. And as he started explaining the process, I put all the pieces together and I was like, oh my gosh, that's how I healed. That's that's the process I went through to heal, but I didn't know it was a, what it was called or that it was actually a modality. So it was really amazing because in that moment, I knew that's my purpose, that's what I wanna do. And in 2009, I uh, soft opened, we'll say. And then in 2011, we officially became a 501c3. And at the time, the organization was not just about helping veterans, it was about helping the whole community. 
And I started to notice the need and the underservice of our military members. It is really, truly a very underserved population. And that's when I really felt led to do something about it. I created the name Hooves with my dad and my farrier in 2009. I needed a more specific targeted name. The military loves acronyms, so what are some horse acronyms that I can come up with that will really connect? And so um, Hooves, Healing of Our Veterans Equine Services, is what we came up with. The mission of Hooves is to enlist rescued horses to help veterans transform post-traumatic stress into post-traumatic growth. I served in the military for 31 years, active duty and Indiana National Guard, and uh, I was activated five different times. Um, was deployed to Afghanistan, um, Iraq, and uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. After leaving the military, the military doesn't really give you a lot of a lot of coaching, a lot of help getting back into the civilian world. Uh, they just uh, thank you for your service, and then. You know, give you a, give you a trip back home, uh, and after that, you're kind of on your own. I did 12 years and uh, was cut after the original Desert Storm, so I I uh, didn't leave on my own choice. At 17 years old, uh, my parents had to sign the papers very reluctantly, but they knew I was going to do it anyway. Um, I went to boot camp and. Uh, the year 2000 and I spent eight years on active duty. While I was on active duty in the Marine Corps I served uh, three tours in Iraq. Getting out of the Marine Corps in 2009 was like you just you had this incredible brotherhood one day and then the next day it was it wasn't actually gone you still had contacts you can talk to people um, however but you know you're you're in the civilian world and it's a very different way of um, operating. It's a very different way of living. Um, there was far less support I experienced in, in the civilian world than while I was on active duty. Um, I went to, I, I, I left active duty, I got married very quickly and started, started college um, and then got pregnant and was just trying to have to figure out things, figure out doctors, figure out how to get connected to services and, and that was really hard because we're not, you know, when we're on active duty, we're not necessarily taught to or encouraged to ask for help. Like, you ask for help when you need to know something as part of your training, but you're not encouraged to ask for help about something personal. So that transition was, was really, really difficult for me. Um, at the time, I don't think I realized quite how difficult it, it was, because, you know, again, in the military, in the Marine Corps, you, you you put one foot in front of the other no matter what. You're just, you're doing what you're trained to do. When I was going through medical retirement, my chain of command didn't reach out to me. I didn't get any, you know, support from my chain of command. There was a huge loss. I didn't see the other side of it and I came to Hooves. A lot has happened since 2011 and there's definitely been some trials and tribulations, but there's also been a lot of triumphs and one of the things that we teach at Hooves is that there's purpose or meaning behind everything that happens. And even though something seems like a struggle or a tragedy, there's a gift in it if you're willing to look for it. Just when the program seemed like it was taking off in 2013, uh, a couple days after Christmas, my dad unexpectedly passed away. And he was my best friend, my business partner, and there was absolutely no way that I could continue without him at that time. So I had to shut down the farm, put it on the market. We had to rehome many of our horses. And I really thought at that time that that might be the end of Hooves. Luckily, because of the tools that I have, that we teach at Hooves, when everybody thought I was just going to give up and crumble into the ground, I was actually able to get through an extremely challenging situation with Poise and Grace because I knew at the time, I didn't know what the purpose was, but I knew that there was meaning behind it and I knew that if I just stayed focused and stayed true to myself, that things would work out somehow, some way. In 2014, I ended up liquidating and selling everything off on the farm. 
I found myself in a 950 square foot cottage in someone's backyard and I didn't really know what the future held but uh, I had gotten a degree in marketing so I ended up getting a, a job at a pain clinic and I was doing their marketing and that was a really interesting experience for me because um, I got to see kind of the other side of how people in, who are in pain are being treated. At the time I didn't really understand why I was in that job but looking back it gave me a lot of awareness and information and really to put together a whole piece of the puzzle. And I met my husband in 2015 and he would hear me talk about hooves all the time and I didn't really have plans of restarting it at that time but he said you have to restart this this is all you talk about this is your dream um, if you don't do it you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life and I said well yeah but you don't understand it's a lot of work and there's just so many challenges and he just said I'll help whatever we have to do I'll help and so in 2015 we relaunched the program offering one day re uh, workshops on Sundays and the very first workshop I remember we had only three people show up and what happened that day really was life-changing I've always been even a little skeptic of my own work which I think is important um, to keep balanced but in just eight hours I watched these three veterans have a total transformation it was unbelievable that was just kind of our test and we said okay thanks for coming it's winter um, we're gonna shut it down and they were like oh no you're not we're coming back next month <laughs> and I said okay well <clears throat> as long as you guys want to show up I'll show up and that's how Hooves was relaunched into one day workshops once a month, we'd find somebody's arena, we'd haul everything there, set it up, and put on these one-day workshops. And what I realized from that is that what we were doing was so powerful that people actually needed more than just one day to process what was happening. So I had one of the participants call me on Monday morning after the Sunday workshop and say, I don't think I can go to work today because I still can't process how a horse totally transformed my life in one day. I realized that we needed to offer more than one day of this because people really needed some time to process the depth of the healing that was happening. And it was from there that we decided to offer Hooves as a three-day retreat. At this time, we still didn't have our own facility, so I rented out Mommy Bay State Park and I rented out the stables across the street. And in October of 2017, we put on our first three-day retreat. And I thought the one-day workshops were powerful, but what I witnessed happen in three days' time was really, really remarkable. And I just knew that we had something so powerful that we had to keep going and we had to keep growing. So we were barn hopping, we were renting other places, and then in 2018 we actually found a small farm and we were able to rent that for about a year and while it helped us get the job done it wasn't everything we needed for the the big picture the big vision and so I really just took it back to faith and uh, I said a prayer I said God I'm trying to do your work can you please help I'd really love 30 acres on on the park with a natural water source running through it and three days after my prayer, I was contacted by the lady that owns the farm that we're at now. And she said her husband had passed away. They didn't want to keep the farm, too many memories, and she was going to offer it to us before she listed it. And I came down the driveway, this overwhelming sense of home. I, I knew we didn't have the resources, but I thought we could get the resources, and I offered her a land contract, and she said yes. So again, 30 days later, we're moving in. It's October and we are, we are moving into the farm. We were able to hold one retreat that season and it was just another layer, another level. The work is powerful, but being able to bring veterans into this farm with the long driveway and the beautiful scenery, it really is a sanctuary here. And it really gives them just this sense of calm and home that adds to everything else that we were already doing. So we really found ourselves again, just at, at the next layer. 
came to Hooves in September of 2019, just prior while I was going through the um, phases of uh, the medical retirement. When I returned from Iraq in 2008, I had lost a couple of my soldiers over there. I was a platoon sergeant at that time, and I was responsible for 42 soldiers. I sent two home critically wounded, and two of them were KIA. Um, I still have a little bit of um, tears for them. It's been 14 years. However, I am also grateful for what they have given because their, their skills and traits and everything has spread out to the many. And, um, and they have given me the desire to help out other veterans with their PTSD issues. Since I hadn't actually seen combat, in my mind, I didn't feel I was worthy to go through with these guys that had been through you know, terrible things in their lives. I actually just volunteered out there and then one of the guys heard me tell my little story there and <clears throat> he told me that, uh, that for me to call him a brother, I needed to be part of this. So uh, I went to my first retreat four years ago. Several years ago, um, I, I went to a one day retreat um, that Amanda was holding and I, it, I was very reluctant to show up. Um, it was shortly after my mom had passed away and life as I knew it was essentially <laughs> over. And I didn't want anything to do with anyone who might, who might force me to look at things a little bit different. Um, I was hurting and I just wanted to stay hurting. And I showed up that one day and was pretty quiet. I'm generally pretty, pretty quiet when I show up to something new and very quickly realized that I was gonna learn things whether I wanted to or not. And the work from that day um, was really, I mean, it was really impactful. Um, it helped me make sense of kind of that turmoil that I was experiencing inside and kind of separate that, um, kind of separate what I was, what I was experiencing with the loss of my mom as, you know, this is grief and, it, and it's okay. Horses mirror the life inside of the human. So anything that we're holding on to internally, anything that we have shoved down or repressed, the horses can see that. And what they do is they bring that out and they almost role play how you show up in life. So if you're shut down, the horse is gonna be shut down. If you're anxious, the horse is gonna be anxious. It allows people to see how they're showing up from a really safe space and it also creates a safe space to become vulnerable. And vulnerability really is the first step of healing. It's being able to say, I'm not okay, and I'm not gonna pretend like I'm okay. And once people do that, and they can feel safe in that state of vulnerability, that's when the real healing can take place. The veterans get to rewrite their future. So through this process, we've done what we call connecting to your blueprint, We've learned how to balance and manage our perceptions. We've reconnected with our body. And it's time to ask the question, who am I now? Who do I wanna become? Uh, what are the things I wanna do? What are the things I wanna have? And when I can be and do and have all those things, what am I gonna give back to the world? What they do is they craft this mission and vision for their life. And then they pick the horse they connected with the most over three days and they take that mission statement into the arena with the horses. And they read the mission statement, and then we look for any last feedback that the horse has for them on how they can actualize their dreams. The horses do a phenomenal job of reading how much that person believes in their mission and vision. And if they don't believe it, the horse will be disconnected. And that gives us the opportunity to do a little bit more facilitation and help them see that the moment they tune in, to that mission and vision. The horse is magnetized to them. And we explain how that's how it's gonna be moving forward. So every morning when you wake up, if you read and connect with that mission and vision, that's gonna set the tone for your day. And people are gonna to respond to you differently and you're gonna to respond to life differently. And I think what's pretty incredible is that most of the people that come through Hooves within one year are living that mission and vision they set that day 
no matter how unbelievable or how far of a stretch it seems when they write it. It was an amazing, uh, amazing time out there. I learned a lot about myself and I learned that I needed to keep coming back. And now I've been back three more times as a mentor. Uh, I went through this year just a month ago uh, as a mentor. It's more amazing every single day. Uh, I've changed so much. I mean, I'm a completely different person than I was 10 years ago. I'm looking forward to the next day. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing whatever the next thing is that, you know, that I can do to help out and help veterans and help everybody else out. Uh, my daughter's actually going through a retreat next month or this month as part of the women's retreat. I can't wait to see how, you know, what it does for her and how much it helps her. Hooves was able to provide me with that knowledge and with those skills to look at the other side of things of what I was gaining as well. I'm no longer suicidal, I no longer live in a bottle, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm a facilitator for Hooves now, and uh, I, I'm just loving life. And I really learned just through the work with the horses that it's okay if you don't have the words, because the horse is going to show you exactly where, exactly where you are in any given moment, that horse is going to reflect, reflect what you're feeling inside and that was really helpful because sometimes it it, it seems you feel pressure to, to talk about it talk about it talk about it well sometimes there's just not words and the work with the horses really showed me that sometimes there there aren't words and, it, and it's okay but it doesn't mean you're not going to learn something or feel something what I learned very very quickly is that it's not the trauma that that changes it's not, it's not what happened to you so much as what happens inside of you. Um, and that very quickly taught me, the retreat taught me that, you know, I am responsible for my own suffering. But once I learned that, you know, the only thing in this world that I can control is myself. And learning to become curious and learning that out of curiosity comes compassion that's what I got here at Hooves. And I got a circle of people, of supportive people, that really was very similar to what I had in the Marine Corps. Not only are we helping the veterans, but we're also helping the family members. This is a good thing for people. You know? It's the things that I believe that my son should have experienced. If my son could have come here, he'd still be here today. Hooves has helped me in my present life by continually reminding me that, you know, radical accountability is, the, is really the only way forward, is asking yourself the right questions um, and challenging your own perceptions and challenging your beliefs to really understand, like, I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't have this work, I, I don't know if I would be here. We did some values work in the retreat, and when I became clear on those values, it just opened up this new world of every time I'm acting outside of my values, every time something is challenging my values, there is discomfort and there is suffering. So we learned um, through a lot of the groundwork exercises with the horses, they just reflected every time what is going on in, inside of you. They just reflect you in any given moment. And um, that was, it, it, it led to this level of, you know, authenticity that was very difficult to replicate outside of, outside of hooves in May of, uh, May of this year and was presented with an opportunity for a job that is absolutely aligns with all of my values and is really connected to my absolute passion and purpose, helping traumatized kids and I'm doing what I was meant to do. I am a behavioral health and wellness coordinator for a local public school district. And on any given day, I'm helping students, staff, and families connect to resources out in the community. Um, but my favorite part of the job is really teaching social emotional learning. And what, what we're learning from research is if you have a child with an academic concern, that child almost always has a behavioral issue or a social-emotional um, concern. When you have a dysregulated child, 
you can't meet that child with aggression. Um, so the work that I learned here at Hooves was to be mindful. I have a pretty strong mindfulness practice which gets me through anything. You have to show up how you want to be seen and right, right in those moments when you have a dysregulated child you can't you can't yell at them, you can't do what you know what you want <laughs> to do sometimes to diffuse the situation. You have to rely on you know calm and you know and just figure out what the need beneath the behavior is. I learned that here. People need to know more about what's available. I think when you hear, well, there's help, and you can dial 988, and you can go to counseling, there's so much more non-clinical that needs to be done. And the pills aren't it. It's self-management. It's, your mind is such a powerful thing. To help bring awareness to the, uh, to the Hooves story and the Hooves program, anything I can do to raise money and awareness for Hooves and just to be there to help out the program. It's what I, what I get, get up out of bed every day for. Currently, we're out here for the Bronco Bash here at uh, uh, Brandy's Ford, Lincoln Mercury. Um, we're having a great time. I love coming out to these and talking with people and sharing hooves with individuals and answering questions with everybody. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, it's, the people here at Brandes has been very accommodating and wonderful with us. Since 2011, we've helped about 450 veterans overcome their struggles. And we have a lot of local veterans and we've also flown veterans in from all over the country and even two from Canada. If you know anybody that is in the military or is a spouse or family member of the military or police officer, fireman, anybody you know, that has PTSD, anybody that has a stressful type of job. Hooves is definitely an organization you want to get involved with. It's an amazing group of people, an amazing group of animals, and it's just, there's no other program like this in the country. What makes this program unique is that, number one, it is non-clinical. And number two, when people come through this program, we tell them, we are not gonna heal you. We don't have the answers to your life. And the truth is that nobody can heal you. But the good news is that you can heal yourself. And when you take on the idea that you can heal yourself, there becomes no limits to your healing. So a lot of people come here and they say, well, the doctors have told me I'll never fill in the blank. And nothing against doctors, but I was also personally told that I would never heal. And I was able to make a full recovery from all of my mental health challenges. And I've been symptom free for 12 years. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I don't want to be. I'm just, I, but I think what makes that special is that I'm just a regular human being. I'm not, I tell people I'm not special. I'm just like you. I'm a regular human being, I'm a veteran, I've had struggles, but the good news is that I've been able to fully heal and fully overcome all of this with the work that I teach and practice. And you can too, that is available to you. And just the look on people's face when they hear that is profound because they've been told, they've, they've had limits placed on their healing and I just, I can't buy into that. I mean, I'm not healing anyone, but I'm giving people a set of tools and it's limit, the potential is limitless, really, truly is. I think seeing people open their mind to the possibility that they can be whole and they can be healed uh, in and of itself just sets a different precedent. You know, it's not easy. We tell people it takes work, but I have never one time not seen this process work when people put in the work. Now, the caveat to that is you get out of it what you put into it, and not everybody is willing to give it 100%. But for those that are, for those that show up and implement these tools in their life, the healing is profound, the healing is life-changing, and the healing drives what we call the ripple effect. So the veteran comes here and heals, 
but then they go home and then they can help their spouse and then they can help their kids and they can even help their friends and their communities. Even though one person comes through this program, that's five, five to six people that are actually gonna receive healing through the tools that we teach and the work that we teach and that military member going home and just showing up differently. And to me, that's just profound and incredible. I think these tools are critical for everyone, really, to have. And I think they can take anything that anyone else is doing to the next level. My hope for Hooves is to be able to share what we're doing that's working so well with other organizations who are helping veterans. People often ask me, now that we've had the success that we have, what's next for Hooves? And I would say the next step for this organization is to really take things nationally. So we're flying veterans in from all over the country, but we can only help so many people. And I think the process that has been put together, it works. I've never seen it not work. And I'd love to get it into the hands of other organizations who are also passionate about helping veterans. So my hope for 2023 or 2024 is to actually be able to take this on the road and go to other places and, and hold some Hooves trainings. I have never met a person who doesn't know a veteran 
who is struggling. So if there's someone on your mind or someone on your heart, please send them this video, send them our website. We are here to help. This process works, but we need your help to grow and to reach more veterans and to continue the mission of saving lives.